everyone. Here we are. We're live. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know where you're watching from. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited that you're here. And thank you so much for tuning in to the All Brands Show. Today, we are going to be talking with the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge about making connections, finding deeper meaning, teaching creativity, improving lives, creating sparks, and touching people uh, through sewing, something that we all know and love. So um, <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Um, yes, so today we're going to be talking with them about how um, our donations with them have, have helped them in these amazing uh, endeavors that they have. So give us some um, likes and comments and shares if you enjoy this. And um, I'm just going to be introducing uh, Chancellor Zero Skidmore. So he is phenomenal. He's a writer, a spoken word poet, an educator, a percussionist, a voice actor, a radio show host, and the arts administrator and an arts administrator. He's from Plaquemine, in Louisiana. He's consistently facilitated writing workshops for youth and adults in Louisiana throughout the country since 2005. He's published a collection of his poems entitled Upbeat, Downbeat. He served as a program director and executive director for um, two nonprofits. In 2013, he won the Individual World Poetry Slam now he serves as the Director of Community Engagement at the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge, where he facilitates writing workshops for the incarcerated. He oversees the State Poetry Out Loud competition and hosts the radio show podcast, AC23, that can be found on the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge website. So I'm going to bring him in. And hello, can you hear me? Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, everyone, if can you hear me if you're watching the show? All right, so I'm going to remove zero. Uh, everyone's saying hey to you. And uh, we'll get you maybe to come maybe with Renee. Um, but I'll, I'll bring you right back, okay? Just one moment. Okay, so I'm going to bring in next Renee Chatelaine. And Renee, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, I'm gonna introduce every, I'm gonna tell everyone about you. If you could just run over and tell Zero, like he needs to click the cam mic option on his computer to get, uh, to get it to, so that he can hear me. Oh my goodness. That's it's so funny because dress rehearsal went so great now. <laughs> so, okay. Um, let's see here. So that was Renee Chatelaine, everybody. And let me tell you a little bit about her. She is phenomenal. Renee Chatelaine is a native of Baton Rouge and a graduate of the Louisiana State University holding both a B, a bachelor's degree in history and a Juris Doctor. She is the president and CEO of the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge. Her career as a dancer includes performing with the Iglove Sky ba Ballet in New York, the Delta Festival Ballet in New Orleans, the Tampa Ballet, and the American Dance Machine in New York. Renee has been a guest teacher for the Iceland Dance Theater in Reykjavik, Iceland, and at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, at Hunter College in New York City, Southeastern Louisiana University, as well as several local dance companies in Baton Rouge. She serves as the advisory board of the American Mural Project, supporting internationally known artist Ellen Grisadik. And she was selected to participate in the South Arts Dance Touring Initiative. She is a co-founder of the Mid-City Dance Project um, and served as the executive director at the Manship Theater at Shaw Center for the Arts in Baton Rouge. Prior to her position at Manship, she founded the dance programs for two independent schools in Baton Rouge while serving on the staff at both schools as a history teacher and a community service director. She's a member of the Louisiana State Bar Association, the Baton Rouge Bar Association, and has been a panelist for the 
Governor's Cultural Economic Summit. She's a recipient of the Baton Rouge Area Foundation's John Barton Senior Award for Excellence in Nonprofit Management, the Baton Rouge Business Report's Most Influential Women in Business, the Unsung Heroes Award by Louisiana State University's Office of Multi Multicultural Affairs, the Esprit de Femme Award by the LSU Women's Center, and she's been recognized by the Louisiana State Senate for her contribution to African Americans in Louisiana through the arts. She's been awarded the President's Award by the Baton Rouge Bar Association, was a 2005 finalist for the Blue Cross Blue Shield Award and rec was recognized by the Louisiana Association for Nonprofit Associations as a Louisiana heroine. She was a member of the 2005 leadership class of the Baton Rouge Area Chamber and has been inducted into the Redemptorist High School Hall of Fame. She served as a panelist at the Association of Performing Arts Presenters in New York and the inaugural Women's in Dance Leadership Conference in 2015. She served as a community coach for the city of Mandeville through the Louisiana Department of Culture and Tourism's Creative Placemaking Initiative. She considers her passion project the creation and staging the fading line a, commemorati a commemoration of the 1953 Baton Rouge bus boycott and is grateful for those who played a role past and present. She is most grateful for her love of her life and her constant source of inspiration, her husband, Kyle. He's a lucky man and we are so lucky to have her on the show today. So I'm gonna bring her in. Hi, Renee, welcome. Hi. <laughs> What an introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, oh my goodness. Thank you so much for being on the show with us. Uh, and thank you, Zero. I'm going to bring him in as well. And can you hear me now? Oh, perfect. But now we can't hear you. <laughs> Shuckers. <laughs> now. Yes, yes, we can. It's so weird. This technology. <laughs> So weird. <laughs> well, we got it. We're here and we're here to talk about the amazing things that you've done. Oh my goodness. So we've done actually a few programs together. So can y'all kind of tell us, tell everyone how, what was the brainchild and how did we get connected? Uh, that would be Renee's, Renee's already. Okay. Well, um, you know, we had been asked to go to the Salvation Army Men's Shelter. Um, they have a program for men uh, who seek recovery and a better life. And because of the 2016 flood, um, their, you know, their whole facility had been underwater and they had just rebuilt it. And they wanted us to, to see what art components they could, they could add so that it looked more homey, less institutional. And as I toured, the facility I saw that where the men slept there, it, it looked very institutional. And I thought, wow, they could just each have their own quilt, something that made their space unique. It would be so great. And while I was talking about that idea, the trustee, who was one of the men in the program, um, said, oh, I have such great memories of quilting with my grandmother. And we immediately had a bond over sewing and over quilting and that whole tradition. And so he was so excited. We had a conversation that we went into um, part of the facility where the men work, which is where they sort some of the donated clothes. And he screams out, oh, this woman, you know, uh, is from the same area of the state as me. And, you know, she has all these connections and it all came from that conversation completely centered around quilting and that shared experience that people have that tradition. And so, um, working with, you know, zero working with some other artists and with really their staff, we came up with the idea of creating, um, a project around sewing and, and particularly quilting because we thought this is a really great way for them to tell their stories through that medium. And, and then we decided it would also be a great way to decorate and fill this very institutional looking space um, with, with uh, you know, quilted quilts hanging on the wall. 
And so that's how we started the program. And then I guess, Zero, you want to tell them a little bit about like the program itself and what it entailed. Yeah, so Ray brings me in and uh, explains the program. I'm, I'm blown away because it's so just, um, you know, I, I think it was a brilliant program from the, from the beginning and I was really excited about being a part of it. Um, I was asked to go in initially uh, to one of the breakfasts that the men have at the shelter and just talk to them about um, enrolling. Uh, I guess we kind of foresaw that a lot of the men at the shelter might not be crazy about sewing. And so I went in as an artist um, uh, and, and talked about the program and talk about like what, what an empowering force the arts has been in my life. And um, I think I ended up maybe performing a couple of poems for the guys. And so we kind of broke the ice and then we just talked and um, we ended up initially getting about five guys uh, who said they really wanted to give it a try. And um, I think at the end of the program, we had um, about four of them had um, participated in the program and contributed to the quilt. And that was just the first iteration of it. And so we had more guys participate as we continued forward. So um, yeah, it was wow. really cool. They were, they were meeting. We had just, um, we'd gotten a few sessions and then uh, COVID hit. And so um, we ended up pausing everything for a couple of weeks when we were in deep quarantine. And then uh, we were able to go back with some protocols to keep everybody safe. And so we went back with masks and we went back with sanitizer. And we went back with rubber gloves and um, we were able to, co to continue um, with uh, strict protocols in place to keep everybody safe. And I got to tell you, they made a, a absolutely beautiful quilt that will show everyone shortly. Um, but I have to tell you, it unexpectedly touched my life as well. I had to go to the hospital for a procedure and it, I didn't know it was going to be on the, in the hallway on the way to the doctor's office. And I just saw, I, I had seen pictures, which brought tears to my eyes. Um, but when I saw it, um, it, it just really, it floored me. It was amazing. So can you, can you tell us how, how did that affect the men that you worked with? Um, in well, the, uh, program. the teaching artist, uh, Jennifer Carwell came in and worked with the guys on a weekly basis. I went every, I went in every couple of weeks to see how the program was going and to uh, offer assistance whenever I could. But it was really Jennifer Carwell who executed that programming, uh, every week with the guy, um, teaching them how to operate the machine, um, how to basically how to sew and then how to, um, create a, a, a vision for their quilt. Now, keep in mind, this quilt was, the, the plan was for this quilt to hang in the room um, where their families come to visit them. So they really wanted that quilt to exemplify their experience with the Salvation Army and um, things that were important to them, but also kind of homage to the Salvation Army for, um, for helping with their recovery. And so, and, and you know, it says a lot about family as well. So, um, yeah, it was the, the guys to see them get more confident every week on the mountains and uh, to see them start to lead each other. Like once they learned uh, more about the machine, they were you can see them going around helping each other um, with the machine. Um, it was really exciting to watch. And and with myself having some limited. Uh, um, uh, ability to draw, I was able to kind of help the guys kind of take some of the uh, uh, images that they wanted to sew and really be able to put them on paper so they can have some type of template before they started started sewing. So it was really exciting to see it all come together. Wow. And so this was through the Salvation Army. And uh, we actually met, uh, we didn't meet you on that initial meeting. Um, but we met with Renee and, and Todd Ulmer and um, we, we emailed with Miriam Overton. And can you just kind of explain, um, Renee, um, who, who were the people at the Salvation Army and, and what, what circumstances were they coming from? Sure, so the, the, the particular group that we were working with, and I know the Salvation Army helps lots of people in need, but these are men who have been homeless, 
um, they have been, they have fallen into substance abuse. And, and so this is a program that is, it starts out to be a one year program where they have shelter at the Salvation Army, but they work toward their sobriety. They work toward um, really getting their life back on track. And so one of the things we felt like that was important about the sewing project was not just that it helped them to express their feelings, connect to their families, um, but also to learn a trade, you know, I mean, it's really important and sewing is, is an important thing that, and it, and that skill can be applied. And, you know, little did we know that the next year would be um, a pandemic. And we got a call from the local hospitals that said, you know, when it all first began, there was a real run on PPE and they didn't have enough nurses gowns to replace. And they thought, you know, maybe the Arts Council can help us with this particular project. And so All Brands was so gracious to help with fabric and we were able to do washable nurses gowns that the hospitals could then use. And so the Salvation Army gentlemen who were just learning how to sew, but were learning also about patterns and all sorts of things, were able to cut those patterns to help us out so that then we could, we could give those cut uh, fabric patterns to local sewists and local, um, you know, crafts and costumers um, in the in the Baton Rouge area, even as far as Lafayette, some people drove in to to go ahead and sew these gowns. Some of them were paid for that. Lots of people volunteered, and if they volunteered, we took the the money that was given to us for those gowns and we put it back into the program so that we could provide more resources to people in need during the pandemic. And um, and so the guys were fantastic. So they also, I'd say, another dimension or another part of this was not just that they were helping to reconstruct their own lives and get reconnected to their families and get on the right path. But they were also really every day contributing to the community in a very meaningful way. And so the, the quilt that you saw at the Baton Rouge General, it's so poignant because that's the second quilt they made. And they decided to dedicate that one to all of the first responders and healthcare workers and at the Baton Rouge General, which is where they receive some services. And so they were able to present that to the Baton Rouge General. And now it proudly hangs in different spots. It kind of tours the Baton Rouge General campuses, both at Mid-City and the Blue Bonnet location. And it's just so lovely. And it would not have happened without the machines, without the materials from all brands. And you guys. Such a, such a great like coming together of all the community members, right, to, to do something for others. And thank you, Zero, for inspiring um, through sewing with this program. Yeah. So uh, I, it's just amazing what you do every day. And this is just a little part of what you do. So we re are really grateful for that. Um, I have a slideshow that I'm going to bring up on the screen that shows some photos of, um, you know, some of the things. Uh, so thank you, Renee, for putting this together. Sure. So, this, is, this is actually Jennifer Carwile. And one of the men at the shelter learning how to work the machine. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, they really loved it. And and like Zero said, this is now, you see them helping each other in that process. Yeah, they, they, took, they took over, man. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> you always have to make friends sewing because you need a pin here or uh, something else there. And it just, this, and I got to tell you, just the sewing community is such a supportive um, environment to be in. Like uh, there's so many different groups that meet and it's a very social um, activity and just great people that do it, um, that just enjoy the art of sewing and quilting and anything with fabric and a needle and thread. So, so great. <laughs> so is, this is the first quilt, correct? Correct. Yeah, this is the first quilt. And I, I, I wanted to add to like the, the guys took ownership and it, it was really, I would say to give credit to Jennifer Carwild because yes. from early on, she said, this is going to be your quilt. We I'm, I'm here to help you, but this is going to be your quilt. And so the guys really took ownership from very early on. Um, and so it, it it was the quilt, but it was also like the operation of the machines. They, they took ownership of the process 
as well as the the um the the culminating piece of art. Wow, it's beautiful. I see there's a heart with hands on it. Very meaningful. Um, it, it looks like a, a lot of it, it comes from the scriptures. Yeah, there was uh, some definite um, like religious iconography, I, I, icons that went onto the, the, the quilt and um, um, some of it um, was personal uh, due to their, their journey um, towards you know, where they're trying to get to in their lives through the Salvation Army. But uh, yeah, you see some of it paying homage to the Salvation Army and the church. Yeah, that's amazing that um, they were able to make something together so beautiful. And it's cool. a quilt is just, you can wrap yourself in it. It's just such a <laughs> lovely uh, piece of art that's also functional as well. Yeah. Um, Oh, and then COVID hit as soon as <laughs> as soon as we we got started. It seems like we had to take two steps back, but um, we de we definitely found new ways to work together. That's for sure, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, this is really great because um, we're talking about communities coming together. So we are actually at Thompson Pipe Company, which is on Scenic Highway because they cut pipes, but we found that the Baton Rouge Community College um, professor and students could translate the patterns into a CAD program that worked the pipe cutting machine. And so we could put a lot more fabric and cut the patterns um, faster because we had to get those, we had to get those gowns out super fast. Um, and so this is one of the guys from the Thompson Pipe Company and some of our volunteers who are, um, getting those, those gowns cut. Lucy and Britt. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's amazing when, um, when they were starting to say and schools taking out um, home economics and things like that and, and arts programs and they say, oh, sewing is not a necessity. And then everyone needs PPE, um, including nurses and doctors and civilians. And um, so, uh, it's just amazing that we, we can all pull together and um, get you supplies that you needed to make this happen. So thank you. It was so great. So so this is also, they're helping to sew and cut patterns um, during that whole PPE gown uh, project as well. And I will tell you that some of those gowns went as far as Yonkers, New York, because while New York hospitals were getting PPE in their hospitals themselves, social workers and people working in nursing homes were on like a second tier. And so they needed the gowns as well and they weren't able to get them. So we were able to send as far as Yonkers, New York, um, some of these great, uh, beautiful fabric uh, gowns that far. So we were able to really make a, make a huge reach. Wow. So these were the guys at the Salvation Army that were sewing these? Yes. I did not know that. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That is phenomenal. Oh, and then is this, this is a photo of the delivery. Right. So, so we asked people to, if you were, if you sewed and you could make gowns and we had a pattern that was, you know, easy, easy to kind of put together. Um, you could just tell us how many you wanted to sew and you know we had a really short time frame and not not children's museum allowed us to use their parking lot so that they could simply just drive through pick up all the notions and materials and then drive away and if they finished their gowns they would come back and deliver them so you can see zeros here um, we have other staff members that i'm looking at and then the the woman that we see facing us is picking up some of the gowns so she's one of the one of the sewing volunteers or, or, you know, we offered, we said, you can either be paid because some people were really out of work and needed the money. And then some people were, um, were, were just doing it, um, you know, as sort of a service and either way, you know, we, we felt like it was really valuable. So, um, so that's what you see happening here. Wow. My goodness. 
So it says the Arts Council staff and interns collected handmade masks from local customers and volunteers working for performing groups who had been shut down. These masks were sold to businesses and industries in the area with profits going to the performing arts associations who participated in the project. Again, All Brands was there to provide fabric and supplies and we're very happy to do so. So great. And this is the quilt that makes me cry every time. <laughs> this is the one that's hanging in the hospital that I happened upon uh, randomly one day. And it it's so touching. Well, you can see that they've grown in their skills. I mean, uh, there were also more participants this time. Um, once some of the guys saw the, the finished product, they said, oh, OK, maybe I do want to maybe I do want to learn how to sew. And, uh so there were more participants in the second iteration. And um, yeah, this one, I mean, uh, it just pops. That that blue, um, yeah, it, it definitely was, uh, not to take anything away from the original quilt, but you can definitely see that their skills had grown. Yeah. Um, who, do you know who the one, who the person that did the heart with the heartbeat through it? Because... <laughs> Pat, were you there when that happened? Because it, it it is so touching. Yeah, the uh, the Salvation Army has a lot of rules about sharing. The guy. Okay. But um. Well, I'm sending a lot of love to that person because they touched my heart. Awesome. <laughs> and so that was the past. Here's the present. So this is our most recent. Um, uh, well, Renee contacted us and, and Dr. Charbriand Plummer, um, and she's with the Jewel J. Newman Center, and we donated 12 sewing machines to their, uh, their community center there in Scotlandville, Louisiana. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so that's, um, that picture there is um, Dr. Plummer, and she's, um, I guess she's working with one of your guys to unload the, yeah. or load the machines, but she is herself um, a textile artist and oral historian, and so she's, at the Jewel J. Newman Community Center, they have um, lots of seniors who enjoy classes and love sewing, but they didn't have any of the machines, and so, um, you know, Dr. Plummer was really... Um, really excited to know that that you guys could give 12 machines because now these people can quilt and they can sew and they can do it in a community setting which um, helps with socialization it connects the neighborhoods together and during that time they're telling stories about their lives and their past and what their connections are just like we all do and so um, I know that she's working as, as an independent artist to collect all that and inform her own art making and we're just so excited. We can't wait to see what will happen at the Jill J. Newman Community Center now that they have the right equipment to um, make their art. Zero, what do you have to say about, um, is it the butterfly effect of touching one person's life and it, it's reciprocal? And Well, I think, I think the arts is definitely like a factor, you know, um, I was at Jewel J. Newman the other day um, walking the grounds with uh, one of the employees and she was talking about, she was saying that she didn't have any background in the arts, but you know, we were talking about this mural that's gonna go up uh, soon over there. And I said, well, you're, you're one of the people that artists create art for, you know? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And so uh, artists and non-artists alike are all connected by the arts because if you're not uh, a creator of art, you're a consumer, and in many cases, you're both. But I think that once you uh, start to make an impact, it could be a very small impact, but it encourages others to start making an impact as well. And yeah, it's kind of contagious. So yeah, the ripple effect, it's, it's real. It is. And it's, it, you feel um, artistry if, when, you, when you see it. It's just phenomenal. So, oh, here's uh, by the numbers. So um, I'll read this off to everyone who's not looking at the screen, but there was 16,200 surgical nurses gowns distributed to three hospitals in East Baton Rouge Parish. 12 gowns sent to Yonkers, New York, to social workers who did not have access to PPP. 
1,500 masks sold to Exxon, 500 masks sold to the performance contractors, 400, wow, 400 masks individually sold to businesses throughout the community, 500 masks distributed through Scotlandville High Alumni Center, 485 masks donated to It Takes a Village charity organization. Um, wow, and then the common threads, um, all brands donated six um, machines for the Salvation Army, uh, 10 new sewists trained in workshops at the Salvation Army, two quilts were donated to benefit families at the Salvation Army and patients and their families at the Mid-City Campus of Baton Rouge General, and 12 sewing machines donated to the Jewel J. Newman Center with the um, sewing and quilt making classes for seniors. And I just would like to add to that today. So <laughs> I, um, All Brands is going to make just a small, uh, one of our many small donations um, to you guys and a, a $500 uh, voucher for anything that you need for supplies for your program um, to the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge. Wow. Oh my God. Yes. That is so lovely. <laughs> You're lovely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, we're just so happy to be working with you. And I, I contacted my father, um, who is the reason why we're all here, um, because you reached out to him initially and, and we uh, just, he just wanted to say that um, we enjoy working with the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge and we're looking forward to working with you in the future. Um, and we're very happy to make this small donation today uh, for this just get together that we have. <laughs> we're so thrilled. Thank you so much. And, um, and we can't wait to show you what might come. Yes. Of that donation. I think um, it is that butterfly effect and, and, it's just so exciting. Yeah. Thank you so much. So if there's anyone out there that has any ideas, <laughs> that's how these things get started. And if you're a sewing teacher or something to that effect, just drop us hints, you know? Um, it's 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 amazing to give back. It it's it's good for your soul too and other others as well. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so I have an exciting announcement. Albright has actually made another machine donation today to um, the Louisiana Key Academy uh, Charter School for Dyslexia. We donated four machines. We worked with their uh, principal and um, senator's wife to get that program um, put together and get sewing machines in, in the classrooms at that school. So we're so excited for that. Amazing. We, we also, um, on Monday, we're going to LSU um, and they're going to be having their fashion associations annual fashion show. Uh, it's super fabulous. They walk down the runway with all of their beautiful garments that they make and we're going to be donating a uh, machine to the winner of that. Um, some of our other um, things that we do is um, we, we've worked Throughout the history of our company, it's always been at the forefront that we give back to the community. So we've done tons with uh, local community centers. Um, we've donated fabric for uh, various mass making um, efforts. Um, we've teamed up with uh, Days for Girls, the Sewing Machine Project, um, when there were the wildfires in Australia and um, the kangaroos needed pouches, uh, the baby kangaroos um, needed a pouch to stay warm. We were all sewing those together. And um, I know some, some of you that are watching, I see uh, were part of that. So that was very exciting. Um, quilts for Kids is an organization that um, creates quilts for children in hospitals. Uh, Project Linus, Be the Difference Foundation, various 4-H organizations. Um, and public broadcasting, TV shows, teaching people how to sew, and Fashion Week NOLA, and many more to come. So, and I'm just so smitten that we got to work with you guys um, to make a difference in the community. And thank you. This is just a small part of what you do. So what do you have coming up that's 
exciting. Oh man, so many things, right? Zero. Well, yeah, we have a, a new building we're going to be moving into uh, this summer. Um, the Karis Arash Community Art Center, and um, yeah, we're really excited about that. We have our art summit coming up. Um, yeah, our, our website artsbr. Artsbr.org uh, has all the information on our upcoming events, and uh, you know you can always tune into AC23, our podcast, our weekly podcast, and um, get all the latest news on what's going on with the Arts Council. Yeah, absolutely. And you know um, that Carrie Siraj Community Arts Center has multiple rooms, so if anybody out there wants to meet as a group and do um, some sewing, some quilting, some any textile arts. You're absolutely welcome. The space is flexible and adjustable for whatever art form um, you may create or be a part of. And it is meant for the community. So come visit us. And like Zero said, artsbr.org, you can get more information. Yeah. And if anyone wants to know where to see the most beautiful quilts in the world, um, the Houston International Quilt Festival yes. has announced their... Have you been? Yes. Oh, I it is. <laughs> it is. I was introduced to it through the. I guess it was a quilt competition that was at the Lamar Dixon. Okay. And yeah. and then someone told me about the one in Houston, and so uh, it's, I it's overwhelming. It's unbelievable <laughs> to me. It it's. Have you been zero to the? I don't have a. When is it? Okay, it's at uh, the end of October. Um, October. I think uh, 27th through November 2nd, I believe that's just on the top of my head, but it's www.quilts.com. And it is the largest quilt festival in the world. All brands will be there hosting the brother booth. Uh, but the quilts display is like nothing you will ever see in your life. Um, it is, I believe the most grandest art display that I've ever seen personally. Uh, it's very touching. And um, let us know in the comments if you guys have been there and have been touched by fabric stitched together into something amazingly beautiful. Um, but yes, we're so excited. And I hope that you are able to come sometime, Zero, because we'd love to see you there. Yeah, <laughs> and Houston's right around the corner. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I just want to thank you guys again. Uh, for coming on the show, for being involved in the community, for making this world a better place, for helping people, Zero and Renee, you are amazing. Thank, thank you for you. Well, thank <laughs> you. And I, I was going to say, we all do it together. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope that this video inspires other people to do great things in the community through sewing, um, because this is a superpower that we have that we're able to share with other people. Um, so take it and run with it, everybody. And I hope that you all have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank <laughs> all you. right. Thank you, Zero. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Arts Hi. Council of Greater Baton Rouge. Thank you, Salvation Army. Ah, uh, you're phenomenal. All right. We love y'all. I love you too. Bye. Bye. -bye.